Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at investments and loans that involve some form of regular payments. So we're going to be putting a certain amount into the bank or making a payment on a regular basis. So let's let's look at this example. So suppose we want to deposit $100 every month into an account that pays 3.5% interest compounded weekly. How much money would you have in the bank at the end of 25 years? And another question we could ask is how much interest would you have earned? Okay, so this, this is one that is involving regular payments because we're putting $100 in every month. So when there are questions like this, um, in order to figure out how much money would we have at the end of 25 years, we're going to need a financial calculator to do this because there's a lot of calculations. So here I have one brought up here. Here's our financial calculator and there's a bunch of information that we're going to enter in here that we we're given in the question and then we're going to solve for one of these things that we don't know. So the first thing it's asking is the number of payments. Do we know this? Well if we're paying monthly, okay, if we're paying monthly for 25 years, so we're putting $100 in monthly, so the number of payments are going to be 12 because there's 12 months in a year times 25. So 12 times 25 is 300 payments. So this would be our number of payments and we will enter that in here. We are going to make 300 payments and then the next thing we need here is the interest rate. Well that's right here. It's three and a half percent. So we will enter 3.5. Now notice it's wanting it as a percentage so we don't have to divide it by 100 we just enter the interest rate. The next thing it's asking for is the present value that's how much is there in the bank to start with. Well we don't have anything in the bank to start with. Uh, we haven't put a, like a, a big lump sum in so the present value is just going to be zero but the payments we're making are a hundred dollars so we're putting a hundred dollars in so we'll make the payment a hundred and the next thing it wants us to put in would be the future value, but that's, ex that's what we're going to solve. That's the question. How much money would we have in the bank at the end of 25 years? So that's the part we don't know. And when we've entered all the information, we're going to click, click on that button. But the next thing it's asking for is some frequencies. There's some drop down, drop down windows here. So the payment frequency is how often are we putting the hundred dollars in? How often are we making these payments? And the compounding frequency is how often is this percentage occurring? So if we go back to our question, the payment frequency is monthly. We are making these payments monthly, but the interest is happening weekly. Okay, so the compounding for the payment was monthly. Compounding payment is monthly and the interest, the compounding, sorry, the payment frequency is mo monthly. The compounding frequency is the interest and that is happening weekly. Okay, so we've entered all of our information and we can solve for the future value. So if we paid $100 every month for 25 years and we were able to get this amount of money, you would have this much money left in the bank at 25 years. So 47,883. Let's write this down. 47, 8, no, I can't remember. 883,49. Just double check that. 47,883,49. Okay, so this would be the answer to this question. How much money? At, in the bank at the end of 25 years, $47,883.49. So now the next question is, is how much interest would you have earned? So this, this involves a little bit of calculation. Uh, so here's what we need to know. We need to know how much money did we contribute? How much money did you put in the bank of your own money? So this, this answer here is your own money plus the interest. So if you're making a payment of a hundred dollars every month for uh, 25 years this is how much money you would have contributed so one hundred dollars 
every month times 12 months in a year times 25 years is $30,000. That's how much of that is your own money. So if $47,883 and 49 cents is what you have in the bank after 25 years, and you know that you've put in 30,000 of that, then that's a, so when you subtract that, that's $17,883.49 that you will have earned in interest um, over that 25 years. Let's look at another example. Suppose you deposit $5,000 in the bank and you add $50 each month to a saving account that offers 2.25% compounded monthly how much money would you have in the bank after 10 years? So there's not a whole lot different here, except we're going to start with $5,000. So in our formula here, the number of payments is our first thing we got to figure out. So what's happening here? We are doing uh, monthly payments for 10 years. So that's 12 payments per year times 10 years, sorry, 10 years. Uh, so that's 120 payments that you would make. Okay, so we're going to enter 120 in here. And our interest rate is the next thing that's up. The interest rate here is 2.25. So we'll enter 2.25. The present value, so this is the part that's a bit different. You see, we've put 5,000 in at the beginning. So we have... $5,000 to contribute. Our payments are $50 every month. So the payments are going to be 50. We're going to calculate the future value again. Uh, oh, payment frequency was monthly, so that's, that's the same. And the interest is compounded monthly. Okay, interest is compounded monthly. And now we can click solve for the future value and we would have 12,981. 12,981 and 87 cents change. Okay, so there's uh, how much money we'd have in the bank after 10 years. Let's consider another example. So now let's look at a loan. Suppose you need to borrow $50,000. So now we're going to borrow money from the bank, $50,000. And we've got a 3% interest rate that's compounded monthly. How long would it would take, how long would it take to pay off the loan if you could pay $250 per month? Okay, and then here's another question. What if we could do $350 per month? And then how much interest would we pay in each case? Okay, let's do this one at a time. Let's do the 250 per month. Now I'll show you another uh, web calculator. One of the problems with this one that I'm using right here is that it doesn't do daily, but I like it. It's kind of nice and tidy. Uh, here's another one. And there's lots of them on the web that you can find. Um, so here, uh, let's see, it wants to know what is the present value uh, so in this case, we owe $50,000. So our present value is negative 50000 We are in the hole $50,000. And the future value, we would want to be zero. We would want to be debt-free. So we know that that's zero. And, okay, uh, what else we got? We got the payment. Um, we are going to make we are going to make a payment of two hundred and fifty dollars per month. So payment is two fifty, and the number of periods or the number of times that these payments are going to go in is what we don't know. That's what we're going to have to calculate. Uh, so we don't know how many payments to make, uh, but 
what's our next thing here? Oh, the interest rate. So the interest rate is 3%. So we are going to put 3% in here. And over here is where we have uh, the compounding periods. So the, and the, and the, um, the payments. So the interest is compounded monthly and the payments are monthly. So we are going to do monthly comp, oh, monthly comment and monthly payments. So now what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the number of payments. So it's going to take 277.61 payments. Let's write that down, 277.61. Number of payments, whoops, equals, oh, what did I say, 277.61. Okay, so that's how many payments it's going to take, which we would have to round up to 278. Um, although that last payment would not be a full payment. Um, it would only be 0.61 of our, our payments. Uh, so that would be um, 278 payments. And this has been going on monthly. So 278 payments. If I divide that by 12, that would be 23 years. Okay, so 23 years. And of course, 23 years times 12 is 276. So that's 207, 276 of those months is the 23 years and then two additional months to pay this off. Okay, so it's going to take 23 years and two months to pay off that $50,000 loan if we just paid $250 per month. And now to figure out how much interest, let's do this part, how much interest would we would we pay here? So here's what's going on. We've got payments of $250 every month for 277.61 months. So that's $250 that we're paying for 277.61 months means, whoop, means you have made a total payment of $69,402.50. So that's how much in total that you've paid. Well, if the original loan was $50,000, then $69,402.50 subtract the $50,000 of the original loan means you've paid an extra $19,402.50. That's how much extra money you paid in interest for borrowing $50,000. Let's do this exact same question, but let's do it now with making payments of $350. So what if we could afford an extra hundred dollars here so we're going to go to 350 everything's the same still that minus 50,000 we're still getting to look back to, to zero paying off our debt interest rates the same here's our our um, compounding periods are the same so calculate now the number of payments so the number of payments is almost exactly 177 176.95 so number of payments here is, what was it, 176.95, 176.95. So there's basically 177 payments. We take that and divide it by 12, figure out how many years that's going to take. So now we're down to 14 years 14.75 so that's 14 years and 14 years and 12 months is 168 months 
So we're doing 177, so 168. That's an extra nine months to take us to the 177. So 14 years and nine months. So quite a bit less time. This was 23 years and two months compared to 14 years and nine months. So paying $350 is going to take a lot less time. Let's see what the difference is in the interest. So we're paying $350 every month for 176.95 months. $350 times one, ah, can't read it here, 176.95, 176.95. So 61, 61, 9, 30, 2, 50. 61, 9, 30, 2, 50. 61, 9, 30, 2, 50. There we go. So that's the total amount that we paid. And if we subtract $50,000, the amount of the loan off of that, that's $11,932.50. So you'd, you'd save yourself about $7,500 in, in the long term if you could pay $350 instead of $250. And also you'd have your, your debt paid off in just under 15 years compared to 23 years. Let's look at one final example. Okay, this one is involving a mortgage. So that's a, a loan for a house. So here we have a mortgage of $450,000. There's a 3.5% interest that's being compounded on this thing every month. And the question is, is you'd like to pay this thing off in 30 years. Uh, let's let's just say these are monthly payments too. So we're gonna do monthly payments. Uh, you want to pay this thing off in 30 years. Oh yeah, here we go. How how much would the monthly payment be? What's the monthly payment? Okay, so let's let's get our calculator out again. Uh, let's go back to this one. So uh, the question is, uh, how much would the monthly payment be? So if we're gonna pay this off in 30 years. Then 30 years of monthly payments, so 30 times 12 would be 360. You're going to be doing 360 payments if you did monthly for 30 years. So 360 payments. And our interest rate was three and a half. Yep, three and a half percent. So three and a half percent interest. The present value, so a loan of 450, 450,000. And so here's a thing that we're gonna solve for. We don't know what the payment is. That's the question, how much would the monthly payment be? So we don't know what the monthly payment is, but we would really like our future value to be zero. And we are doing monthly payments, and the interest is calculated monthly. Yep. So we're just going to solve for the payment. So 2020.7. 2020. Point seven. 2020 point seven zero dollars. Let's see, 2020.70. Yeah, so that would be your payment every month for 30 years and then you would have your $450,000 mortgage uh, paid off. Let's let's just see for interest sake how much mo extra money we would pay with our our mortgage. So we've been doing the 202070 202070 2020, we've been making those monthly payments so times 12 for 30 years. So you would have paid off, you would have paid 727,000, 727,452. Okay, so that, that $450,000 that you borrowed, 
you've actually ended up paying $727,452, which means you have paid an extra $277,452 you've paid an extra of that in interest for borrowing the money from the bank to pay off your house. So that's how you can use the uh, financial calculators uh, to do some calculations and solve for some things that you don't know when you're making some regular payments on either uh, an investment or on a loan.